Hi, I'm Freeland Tanner. It's a pleasure to meet you. Welcome to my private world. I get my inspiration for the work that I do primarily from nature. I'm a garden designer by trade and I see gardens all the time, I work in gardens all the time, I design gardens, I uh, play with light and shade and transparency and all those things, all those elements for in, a, in an environmental way and so I draw from that to create the tramp art. I try to make it as fluid as possible. I am involved in plants all the time and I love creating beautiful things out of living material which you have to embrace change and so for me the fact that you see it in its infancy and then you see it fully in bloom you know in the stages in between it really sends a message to me that how I can do things in my art form the same way and I can incorporate these various stages of growth if you will into each piece. It was a wonderful place to grow up in the Napa Valley and uh, I literally grew up in a little house in a fruit orchard and uh, we didn't have a lot of money but my mother was very uh, artistic and she was always painting, uh, she was creating things with found objects, she was making rugs out of reused clothing rags, you know, all kinds of things uh, and so I grew up with a woman that basically always had color and texture going on in the house in various forms and uh, taught me a lot about color and texture and form. Whereas my grandmother had a large garden and so she taught me a lot about horticulture. So I think the reason I do landscape design today is because of the marriage of those two elements that influenced my life so greatly. My mother used to, because we didn't have any money, she would salvage things like she'd go to a grocery store and she'd get all the egg cartons or cardboard boxes for something. And then she would cut them up and make something out of them and layer them and paint them and do what she could, would do what she could afford. Uh, and it was mostly recycled things. And she did some pretty incredible things. You know, uh, she made sculptures out of salt dough. Just anything she could get her hands on that she could see the vision of what she could create with it. And then she would experiment, and if she knew she could do it, then she'd run out and get more before they threw them out, you know, it's that kind of a thing. And all the, she knew all these people at the grocery stores, you know, this was a time when we grew up where everybody knew everybody, and so they saved things for you, or, you know, things like that. And so it, it was an interesting time to grow up, you know, it really was. It was no idle hands, it was uh, keep yourself busy, keep yourself entertained. Um, it was sort of before all the electronic things that we have nowadays, which have really become a part of our society. But back in those days, you had to kind of learn from nature. You had to let nature be your guide. You had to be creative unto yourself. My favorite part is the beginning and the end. The part in between is really more of a... Um, therapeutic process. It's more of a <clears throat> working with one's inner conscious self. That's how I feel. That's how I feel because I, I'm making all these things and I can almost unconsciously do it. I can set myself up and do that and I can open my mind to think because I'm doing a very repetitive thing in, in a lot of ways. It's Each of the parts are different. Each of the techniques in some cases are different. Sometimes I'm drilling holes. Sometimes I'm pinning things together with a micro pin nail gun. A lot of times I'm notching one way or another way or this way or that way. I'm using different tools for that. Uh, there's different thicknesses involved, but all in all, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a highly repetitive kind of art form, which has that pretty much that, that area in the middle there, if you will. And that area in the middle is where I can kind of be in my own world. Much like being in a garden, a beautiful garden, um, where you feel very tranquil and uh, you feel at peace with yourself and you can think about things you might have never thought about before and you feel uh, that you have a very light heart and you don't feel your age. That's one of the interesting things about 
art is that, you know, you can, you can be 18 or you can be 80. And art takes you to a place that has no age limitations whatsoever. When I'm making things, I can be 18 again if I want to, you know. I mean, I can kind of go there. So uh, that's what it does for me in a nutshell. Uh, my grandmother used to whittle and talk to me, and I remember she would think about a lot of things when she was whittling. She would sort of address things in her life that she had questions about, you know, and I could tell she was really deep. Um, and I would see her, you know, pick up a piece of wood that she was going to whittle, or she would just simply grab a popsicle stick out of the kitchen because it was available. And sometimes I'd ask her, well, Grandma, what's that for? And she'd say, oh, that's for later. That's for later. And then I kind of understood that she was going to spend some time thinking about something. And it was maybe her way with de of dealing with issues. I I've seen how, how people can deal with very serious family issues, and they have prayer beads, and they're, they're stroking their prayer beads and thinking about things. It's kind of like one of those kind of things where uh, you're fretting about something, and, they, and there's that, that ter term uh, of fret work. Uh, that's done uh, with a coping saw, much like I use, and it's all very fancy, intricate work, and, and, and the person was literally fretting as they were doing it, you know, so, uh, and, and, you know, it could very well be that they were doing this for therapeutic reasons as well as artistic reasons. Uh, you know, a lot of art is created out of unique situations in the human race. Um, there's good times, bad times, times of turmoil, and it can really bring out some incredible things from artisans that are put in those situations.